Hey, uh, when we get started here, we're going to tie a fly, a steelhead fly, but I want to show you how to use this OPST shank chuck. It's a really nice tool uh, to hold our shanks. Um, it works well on many vices. It works great on this uh, uh, on this regal. You've got to crank those jaws open, but then it fits right in there, and you can make it nice and level. At least that's my story. I'm sticking to it, and then. I'm going to use a pretty, one of the tricks here is you don't want to just put this much in it because you can bend these jaws, the, 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 the chuck. So I like to put about that much in it and I kind of pre-measure it with my uh, finger, my thumbnail. And I get it in there just the right distance. And then I remember which way to turn it and tighten it. There we go. Very good. Okay, now we're gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get started. And what I might do, because everybody knows how to uh, attach the trailer wire, I'm just gonna do that and we'll probably fast forward it, okay? The main thing I can mention is that I wanna lay down a good thread base. Uh, you could use wire, you could use mono, I'm going to use uh, fire line. So one of the tricky parts is when you're using a really short shank, no, a short, yeah, short shank is figuring out how far back you want it and then lashing down enough material. I don't run it through the eye. I used to. I don't anymore. Get a pretty good coating. And then, a little bit of super glue, top and bottom. This piece back on one side. Put this piece back on the other side. This fire line's kind of awkward to cut. So, I stub UV purple. Make good stuff, diamond bright. Uh, nothing magic about this. You could use several different kinds. This is gonna be a pretty simple fly, but super, super effective. That goes without saying. Find my OPST dubbing twirler. My dubbing twirler. Strong enough, sturdy enough to withstand many droppings on the floor. Now the function of this butt section is to just make a little bit of a shiny, sparkly, purpley color spot back here. This will provide a, a small, a slight amount of loft, but not a whole lot, you know, realistically, just a little bit. Kind of, uh, kind of interesting to be tying these flies standing up like I am right now. It's actually not, not too bad. I'm usually sitting down my bench. 
Okay, now I want a, where is it? I want a blue marabou quill. I've got them picked out here. This is like a silver doctor blue. It's not a kingfisher blue. I've hand picked these quills. Now some people like to tie these in. Um, they like to wind them reverse style. I don't but you certainly could tie this reverse style if you wished. Now I'm gonna, um, I usually say I'm gonna fold this hackle, but it, folding, schmolding, it's kind of putting a crease in the barbules so they lay back more easily. Now this entire fly, I don't want to, what do I not want to do? Um, with reverse marabou flies, you often, you know, you might tie in two or three marabou plumes, feathers. This one, I'm, I'm just using part of one. And then I'm going to add some grizzly saddle tips. Now this is a place where a person could use ostrich. And ostrich is awesome. But I really I have come to really like the look these grizzly saddles they wiggle in the current like crazy in a good way that's good crazy and they're very durable you know, uh, ostrich is not particularly durable I love the black and white barring it adds to the you know, you have your actual motion and your appearance of motion. And when you have these grizzly, these black and white saddles, actual, you know, so I'm, I'm trying, I'm turning this around, trying to figure out where to add this on. And these are gonna uh, extend back further than the uh, marabou. And I wind up kind of tight to this, to get them to flare just a little bit. Now this can be kind of grim. Some of these saddles are like 10 or 12 inches long and uh, we, don't, we don't want to waste stuff. So th these were short ones, so we just trim it off. But if they're super long, we save the part we don't use uh, to use on our dry flies. So I've got four of those uh, grizzly scientists, but guess what? That one kind of is in a weird spot. So I just happen to have another one here. Is it bad luck to have an odd number in there? I don't think so. I think it's a good, I think it's good. So we, we got a bunch of, got a wad of material here. We're gonna want a bit of super glue, but first I want to put a little bit of flash in here. Now at the very end, I'm gonna add those uh, the Aquaflies intruder eyes. Now this fly is, this fly is kind of interesting because it, doesn't really have an up and a down side, but it will. It will have an up and a down side because this is ripple ice. It's a smoke blue ripple ice, and it's it's kind of it's real rough to work with. Very different than crystal flash. 
or even lateral scale. But uh, I really like it. Don't don't need very much. I have no idea where I was. I was saying so I'm sure it was profound. So now I want to add uh, some black on the front here, but you know, I've got a lot of space. What I might do, I might find myself a piece of darker blue and just do one turn of darker blue. I want this fly to be darker in front than it is in the rear. And it's going to be really important in tying this front part of the fly to not overpower the silver doctor blue in the back. And that would be really easy to do if so that's why I think maybe just one turn of this followed by a turn of black. And of course, the wider these fibers are, the greater the probability, the greater, greater the likelihood of overpowering. So that's like one and a half turns. Let's see if I can tie it off. Okay. So I'm happy with that. It's just got a hint of that blue. Got some flash in there. We got our wiggly uh, grizzly hackle tips. Now I'm gonna find part of the trick here is is getting. You may actually want to use a schlappen feather or the butt of a saddle hackle because if you get great big long marabou there is going to be a tendency to overpower the pale blue it's kind of it's kind of funny you know I'm, I tie fishing flies I don't tie show flies and sometimes I'm tying a fly and it's like coming out really good I'm really happy with it and I go back when I'm editing and look at it and it's, wow, there's feathers sticking out all over the place. Loose thread. I trim the wrong places. It's amazing what you see with, under high magnification. So here we go. So I want to be, be able to see, I want this black in front, but I want to be able to see both the silver Dr. Blue and the Royal Blue. And I think that's about all I want right there. So there would be a, there would be a temptation to finish winding around, but I'm gonna resist that temptation. I can feel something rough there. I'm trying to figure out what it is. I think it's just... Ah! There we go. I think it's just the material, the kind of the lump I had built up from the, from the trimmed... I'm turning this sideways so I can see it better. Okay. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to try a hot pink eye. I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm sure there are other tricks. First, I'm going to tie the whip finish. Got some different glasses on them. They're not working too well. Okay, I finished my thread. The reason I'm, I sound funny, I got these intruder eyes in my mouth. I'm gonna put the intruder eyes on the bottom of the hook here. I'm gonna put 
put a little dab of super glue right there. And now, we'll see how this works. So I just set those eyes right there. And I'm just gonna pause a second. Now the reason I'm, do the reason I'm doing this is I've, I've tried to work with, I don't want my eyes to be way, I mean it'll fish fine, but if my eyes are way forward here, then I got a gap back there and you know, it doesn't look as craftsmanlike to me, so I like my eyes to be snug up against the marabou. So I've just got, kind of got them set there. Pull the marabou back. Now, I. this is like I'm gonna start to spin deer hair. When I bring this over, I don't put any serious pressure on it, and I, I figurate it, and I'm still not putting serious pressure on it. So it, it's really in place where I had it super glued. And now, I'm gonna go around the base of the eyes and that tightens up on the thread. And then I'll do a couple more that way, a couple more that way, and then I will finish. And so the idea, and I'm not sure if that's, this is the best way or not, but it's what I'm doing now. The idea is you you put that dab of super glue on and just set those eyes on there and, and that kind of holds it in position where you want it to be. So, I have no idea if that makes sense. Uh, I'm sure you will work with your own technique. So, I think we've got ourselves a fly here. Here's how it's gonna ride in the water, the eyes down, the hook is up. Um, I won't put the super glue on the head yet, but the idea here is the, the grizzly hackle tips go back about three quarters of an inch past the hook, but the hook is at the very end of the bulk of the fly. The bulk of the fly is right here. That's most of the dense part. Then it's got very uh, undense, uh, very sparse here, and then just those hackle tips back here. So what we've got us here is a really, really nice, uh, this is not officially an intruder because it's only a single station fly, but it's gonna fish like crazy. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you have fun tying some up and getting out there fishing.